Welcome to Eureka Street Crypto. This is my anti-professional crypto channel. I'm just a barely sane dude who fell down the cryptocurrency rabbit hole. This channel is my fumbling attempt to communicate myself outside my own head about my journey in the crypto space. It is basically my brain dump. None of this is actual financial advice. Good morning, everybody. I'm Eureka John, and you're at Eureka Street Crypto, broadcasting live from Leander, Texas. It is 6.04 in the morning, and uh, yeah, it's Wednesday, January 5th, 2022. Um, today's my wife's birthday, so shout out to my wife. Uh, happy birthday to the old lady. Not that she's an old lady. <laughs> Don't tell her I said that. Uh, but um, yeah. It is another day in crypto, and this is my morning brain dump, aka video blog. And uh, yeah, I'm just kind of trying to articulate the concepts that I hear and learn on a day to day basis and continually expand my knowledge in crypto because the space is ever expanding. And uh, yeah, you know, you're, you're going to be left dead in the water if you don't try to uh, at least, you know, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> surf the internet of information i guess um anyway so yeah i'm actually doing another show after this at 8 15 central standard time i'm interviewing two uh fellow bankless dow members but I, I wanted to go ahead and get one show in the books this morning um because you never know with guests like stuff happens i mean it's happened to me a lot uh people suddenly not able to show up or something and uh, my goal is to try to do this every single day. And uh, I've been doing this every single day for a year <laughs> uh, over. Well, so every single day since February 6th, 2021. But I started this show October 24th, 2020. And uh, um, I, I took that time to kind of figure out how I wanted to format and do this show. But I mean, I have not missed a single morning. And even when I haven't been able to publish, I've at least recorded stuff. Sometimes things go terribly wrong. And that's the nature of this show. It's just to show that we're all learning um, that none of us really know what we're talking about and that things will go terribly wrong. But this is my learning process. And I believe that when you learn, it's just a constant honing process and it will never be perfect. Um, and you can always improve. If you can't improve, then it's time for you to move on. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, and so far, there's so much to learn in crypto. I'm not stopping anytime soon. Um, yeah. So, uh, but I'm not sponsored by anybody yet. I mean, I've May, I will take sponsors if, if you know, if I come across the right one, something that I really like. I'm not just going to take, you know, XYZ funds, you know, wants me to pump their coin or whatever, you know. No, it's got to be something like worthwhile. Um, so I don't know. Um, <clears throat> anyway, uh, let's go to the Coin Gecko and see what's going on on this fine Tuesday morning, January 5th, 2022. And uh, let's see here. Bitcoin at the low, low price of $46,275.06. And Ethereum is at $3,790.97. Binance Coin, $510.53. Tether, a stable coin for the low, low price of $0.99. Cents. Uh, Solana, $168.24. Cardano, $1.33. USDC, another stable coin at the low, low price of 99 cents. XRP, 82 cents. Polkadot, 29.79. Terra, 85.52. And in number 10, we have Avalanche at 104.99. Um, so, yeah, that's the top 10. Of course, the stable coins are in there. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, let's see. We got the two doggy coins um, sniffing around at number 10 and uh, uh, number 12 and 13. Okay, after Avalanche. What did I miss? What did I, I feel like I skipped something. I don't know. And then Polygon at number 14. Uh, Binance, Stablecoin. Then uh, Crypto.com at 54. Everything's in the red. Like every single thing in the top 15 um, is red until you get down to Chainlink, which over the past 24 hours is up 6% and, uh, and up 24%. Last night I was on a call. Um, we were making the smart contract literacy video series. And... Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, you know, I met somebody on there uh, who I've been working with. I didn't know, but they said that they work for Chainlink. And I was like, oh, wow, yeah, I'm a Link Marine and everything like that. And he's like, ah, yeah. Um, I, I can tell he wasn't like a Link Marine and he didn't get into like the culture of it and everything like that, which is fine. Um, I, I wouldn't expect somebody working for it acting like one of the crazy community members. <laughs> like, I love following Link Marine stuff. What's up, Devin? How you doing? 
You know, at eight fifteen today, Central Time, I'm going to be having um, Ivan and and uh, James Montgomery on from the Bankless DAO. You may know them. Um, so we'll be talking about automated governance. But anyway, uh, back to my story. We were sitting here talking, and and you know, I'm, we're making this smart contract literacy video series, and he's one of the writers for it. And um, I was like, yeah, I'm a chain link marine. You know, yeah, you know who Jun Junko is. You know. Everybody uh, that's into Chainlink generally knows who Junko is. Junko is a total shite poster, a troll poster. Junko Suzuki on Twitter. Um, you, it's kind of a rite of passage as a Chainlink Marine to follow Junko. And there's been this ongoing thing. She, you know, she in qu air quotes, says that she's going to show her boobs if Chainlink gets to $50. And it's, all, it's just a running joke. And, uh, you know, I, I've... <laughs> It's it's always it, it it got I believe it did get uh, above thirty at one point when she said she was going to and she never did you know although she's probably be a he and it's probably in pasting in other photos and stuff like that but anyway she she totally posts like total crap but then sometimes there's like some real good nuggets of gold in there you know and uh, she's completely toying with the audience and she's like twenty seven thousand followers um, anyway I brought him to the page. And it showed like boobs. <laughs> He's like, this is really inappropriate. <laughs> I'm like, oh man, I am so sorry. I, I, you know, I am not like that. I'm not chauvinistic. <laughs> I'm not thinking that this is some kind of, you know, it, like he could have been anywhere, like with his wife, uh, you know, partner there with him. He could have been at work. Um, yeah, <laughs> in a coffee shop somewhere. And that pulls up on a screen. So sorry about that. Um, you know, I, I try to be sensitive um, to other people's situations and where they are. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, anyway, so I don't know how I got on that tangent. I just saw Chainlink and that I thought Junko. And then I thought about that awkward situation last night. So I messaged. I said, hey, man, I'm sorry if that pulled up in a bad place. Uh, yeah, Junko got a little uh, rowdy yesterday with the posts. And um, yeah, it, right about the time that I was evangelizing Junko. So, <clears throat> all right. Uh, so let's see here. Let's go. And yesterday I wanted to, uh, I, I've discovered DeFi 3.0, you know, as if DeFi 1.0 and DeFi 2.0 weren't enough to try for newbies to try to grasp, get their heads around, especially DeFi 2.0 protocol owned liquidity. I mean, do you think some kind of newbie is going to be able to figure out what protocol owned liquidity is? <laughs> so, so, uh, now there's something that a new buzzword, DeFi 3.0. So DeFi 2.0 is your Aves, your Compound, your Urine Finance, which you have cryptocurrency and uh, you can lock it up and uh, borrow against it in a permissionless fashion. So it's A-A-V-E, yeah, Aave.com, right? And they're like one of the de facto standards. Aave and Compound, they're pretty much institutionalized at this point. Um, so, uh, and... They're, they're going cross-chain. I mean, they, they are using, uh, I believe, Avalanche. They're using Polygon. Um, and yeah, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're a blue chip cryptocurrency. If you would call any cryptocurrency a blue chip, this would be it. So um, yeah, so you enter the app and, you know, you can use your crypto. You can borrow against it. You, 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 can, uh, you, you, can, you can lend your crypto. Um, you can borrow against your crypto and uh, you can stake it and earn the Aave token and all types of stuff. So there's uh, apparently $26 billion locked up on Aave right now, which is you know, pretty incredible. And uh, yeah, they have the Avalanche market, they have the Polygon market, and then the version one, version two and stuff like that. So, and then a, a, an AMM market, automated market maker, which is basically a DEX. Um, so I have not seen that yet. So um, interesting. Anyway, that's not what I wanted to talk about. Then, then you had DeFi 2.0 come in, which takes it a step further because what was happening on a lot of these apps and a lot of the more janky ones is you get these tourists migrating from app to app, taking advantage of these really high APYs because a lot of these um, uh, protocols want to give super high APYs in order to kind of bootstrap what they're doing. Um, maybe they're trying to promote it. Uh, maybe they've been given VC money or something like that. And so they're doing like high rewards programs. So people were putting their money in there for a while and then they, they, they reap the high rewards as, as fast as possible. Then they pull out and then they're gone. And um, so that leaves a lot of people holding the bag and rug pulling. 
Um, and uh, yeah, it, it sucks. Uh, I've been you know part of a few of those rug pulls as I experiment around with some of these applications. And uh, you know, I'm not gonna name names, but <laughs> but here in comes DeFi DeFi 2.0, where they offer some kind of like bonding service where you know you buy the bond and they buy back your you so when you do a liquidity pool say for instance so let's go over here to um uh let's go to like a uh, sushi swap and sushi swap and uniswap are two very um prominent automated market maker dexes decentralized exchanges and the point of a dex is decentralized you connect your wallet you add liquidity um if you want, but you can swap any token back and forth in the exchange, relying on the fact that there's a pool of funds there ready for you to pull from. Because centralized exchanges, they do it for you. They have order books and they find buyers to your sellers. Uh, DEXs, they have the automated market maker pools. And you, as a general average Joe in the populace, get to add liquidity to that pool. And so say, for instance, you, know, you have a stablecoin USDC and you have um ethereum right those are the two you know, super common very easy stable pool so you add 50 percent of ethereum and 50 percent of usdc to that pool and uh, that those tokens there are now ready to go um for anybody to trade from in this case here i'm half i'm, I'm connected to the phantom blockchain um, i've been doing a lot of stuff on phantom lately and uh, so here i could provide liquidity um for the for sushi swap and i could do phantom like 50 percent phantom and i could do uh let's see here um uh, what, what do i like um i don't know phantom and you know uh i, I don't want to think too too far on this i'm going to sit here and do, uh, let's just do phantom and sushi all right so i could provide phantom and sushi and so i would put in 50 percent phantom 50 percent sushi and then I would be providing liquidity for anybody who wanted to trade Phantom and Sushi back and forth. And then I would get, according to the proportion of how much I put into that pool, a percentage of those transaction fees. So I would get a liquidity pool token representing my position in that pool, right? So um, I would, I don't know, maybe I'll get 14 liquidity pool tokens. Okay, so uh, then I could... Um, if I no, okay, so let's do this. Okay, Phantom and Ohm token, right? So um, I'm fifty percent Phantom, fifty percent Ohm, and um, uh, they don't even have it on here. Jeez. Okay, whatever. Anyway, so the Ohm protocol would come in, and they would buy those liquidity to pool tokens, you know, and uh, give give me a token in place of that, and I would get a discount on the Ohm token, right? So because of them buying that and that, that's bonding. And then I would take those tokens and I would stake it in there. So now Ohm owns that liquidity. So I can't just pull out liquidity at any second. I would just have to sell my Ohm tokens. So um, that's how that works. So it would prevent any type of rug pulling. And that's DeFi 2.0. And I probably just butchered that explanation, but that's how it goes on here. Um, I haven't fully been able to grasp that concept yet to be able to articulate it outside myself. That's the whole purpose of the show. It's what I'm working on. All right. So, um, yeah, so that's DeFi 2.0 is protocol owned liquidity. Now in comes what people are calling DeFi 3.0. And this is, I just learned about this yesterday and I'm not sure that I absolutely love this concept. Um, but it's, uh, for lack of better words, it's basically like an index fund. Okay. So, Let's uh let's go to multi-chain capital as one of the the top ones. So I've been seeing these little uh, you know the dollar sign and the ticker symbol all over Twitter. When you know, you can search those and find you can create an echo chamber for yourself around these things. So let's go to Twitter here and there's a, a Twitter feed here I want to read to you that is very good at explaining what DeFi 3.0 is. Um, Okay, so, um, yeah, so multi-chain capital is one of the big ones on Ethereum, and you have regenerate, re, re, what was this other one, reflexive finance, reimagined.fi, reimagined.fi, yeah, so those are two of the, the ones that I've been seeing most of, MCC and REFI are the ticker symbols for that, and uh, I, I saw, started seeing them so much, I was like, man, I need to check into this. And I saw DeFi 3.0. I was like, oh, no, what now? I was like, I was just starting to figure out DeFi 2.0. Um, but think about this. Think about it as farming as a service. 
F-A-A-S, you know, like everything's as a service now. Um, so um, I, I guess DeFi 2.0 would be um, liquidity as a service. I, yeah, um, I, I, yeah, um, you know, the, but the, there's, there's all types of as a service things. There's staking as a service, people that do the staking for you. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of as a service type of operations. So let's go over here to my bookmarks because I bookmarked this. Um, whenever I'm streaming, the, the internet goes a little slower. So pardon me on that. Um, but yeah, so some of the big ones um, is multi-chain capital. There's a cross-chain capital. There's reimagined FI. Um, well, cross-chain capital is on AVAX, on Avalanche. There's cross-chain farming on Binance Smart Chain. There's scary chain capital on Phantom. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of different stuff. So let me find this. Uh, okay, DeFi 3.0. I will show this thread. Doctor Oral Crypto is the um, is the Twitter uh, person. Loving father, loving husband, and father and doctor and DGen crypto trader investor. See, it just goes to show. You know, and DGens are not just shadowy super coders, and they are not just little kids in mom's basement. You know, they are loving husbands and fathers and doctors and DGen crypto traders and investors. <laughs> We've come a long way, baby. All right, so. DeFi 3.0, past, present, and where we are going. A little thread on MCC and Re ReFi. Uh, so just a quick little um, perspective here. Multi-chain capital is MCC. You buy MCC on Ethereum and Binance Smart Chain. We farm on multiple chains and return the profits to holders. And then ReFi. Uh, ReFi is DeFi reimagined. You buy ReFi, we use it to farm DeFi, DeFi projects and multiple chains. Re to re return the profits seamlessly back to you. And you might be thinking... How is this different than fractional reserve banking? <laughs> yeah, like isn't that what we were trying to get away from? You know, is sitting there giving our money to banks and having them, you know, run off and you know invest it all, and then you know give you just maybe 0.1 percent at best of the yield, uh, or centralized exchanges, you know, where they hold the keys to your crypto and then they go and you know like Celsius and BlockFi and stuff like that, and then they go invest. And then, you know, they give you back, you know, four to 8% better, better returns for sure. So that's kind of like a, a gateway for people to get into crypto. But I guess this is where you buy that token, the MCC or refi token, and you pay a tax on the way in and a way out, like about five or 10% uh, when you buy and sell. And a percentage of that tax goes to all the holders of these tokens, MCC and refi. And it goes to the treasury so they can continue to buy uh, buy more and invest more in a lot of these high yield um, programs on cross chain yield farm type of uh, programs and uh, DeFi 2.0 programs and stuff like that. And I'll explain that here in a little bit. So first, what is DeFi 3.0? The term was coined about six weeks ago with the stealth launch of MCC. With the release of MCC, simple but brilliant concept was introduced to DeFi of farming as a service and reflections. So reflections is just you holding the token and you're getting a reflection of their 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 profits that they get from whenever they are uh, yield farming your, your money. So due to multitude of opportunities that currently exist in DeFi with staking, yield farming, bonding, borrowing, and et cetera, isn't it, it is very hard to keep up with all the strategies that can generate good ROI for the average investor. Um, so who is the target audience for FAAS, farming as a service? One, people who do not, so it's, the target audience is people who do not know how to effectively farm. Uh, meme sector booming for a reason, right? Uh, so, and do not have the time to farm, not full-time in crypto or not large enough capital, 100K plus to do it efficiently and effectively on their own. Basically 90% of people on their on their own. I mean, I I love sitting here piddling around, you know, with a couple hundred dollars and stuff like that and all these yield farms. I you know, This is what I do. So I don't really want to do this, you know, because I love going in and experiencing it for myself, but not everybody's like me, you know? Uh, so not everybody wants to go and piddle around with all this stuff. They don't have the time. They don't have the money. They, you know, they they don't know how to. Um, me, I'm trying to learn how to, and I've taken a lot of pretty bad hits at times, you know, because you know I've totally screwed up and gotten into maybe something I shouldn't have. So okay, so who are the reflectors? Reflectors are individuals who who reflecting or consistently compounding due to tax and redistribution of tokens during buys and sells. Basically, they're the people holding the tokens. Simply, the more volatility, the more reflectors will holders will earn. So the more people are buying and selling and entering and exiting out of these protocols, 
they're get the reflectors are the ones getting attacks out of that. So reflections is an excellent way to incentivize long-term hodling, right? So the more the longer you hold that, the more of these entry and exit tax um, percentages you'll you'll earn from people going in and out of these protocols. Um, so current major players, according to my opinion, um, is um, multi-chain capital, um, which is Ethereum and Binance Smart Chain, and regenerative. Uh, not re reimagined finance, which is on Ethereum. All right. So pros for M for, for multi-chain capital, strongest and the best community among all DeFi 3.0 protocols. So they have the best community among the DeFi 3.0 protocols. Um, they're innovators and originals. Um, and then they are a strong team. The dev is not doxxed. Um, people still remember all the migrations and drama with the previous contracts. So, um, and then substantial token burns. All right. Uh, and then the cons, um, version three took a while to roll out. A lot of original holders threw a towel. Um, and then another point, historical lack of transparency and poor communication of team with community improving, but still weak. Um, the current uh, multi-chain capital price action as of December 29th, sitting around 100 million market cap, retesting that all-time high during rugging Bitcoin. Um, onboarding of large crypto Twitter accounts and influences, great overall hype with more with new macro leg up. Um, I expect multi-chain capital to go into billions market cap, one year returns conservatively 20 to 30 times potential 100x. All right, um, so that's multi-chain capital. Here is um, reimagined finance. Pros, transparency, communication, um, good, um, strong community. Um, doxed charismatic dev, which means doxed means they, you know who it is. You know, they're not just someone on and they have a large team. And then the reflections, um, you know, what you hold, earn for holding the token is paid as a dividend in Ethereum. So it's a hedge against the inflation of that native token. So you're not getting paid in some random crap toy, coin, you're getting paid in Ethereum, which is good. And then um, the cons currently weak marketing. And then uh, they sell drama, the small drama at launch that led to massive dump that killed the hype for the project. So the current refi price action sitting around $12 million market cap, slow and steady move towards all time high. People are not as hyped due to lack of marketing and it has potential to move into billions of market cap as well. One year expected returns conservatively 50 X potential 300 X. So summary, um, multi-chain capital is king and top protocol among DeFi 3.0 and likely to remain. Um, I'm confident to say that they will continue to push innovations forward and will develop. And then refi, uh, reimagined finance, a uh, great alternative that offers unique features that multi-chain capital is currently lacking and is only one-tenth of the market cap of uh, of MCC. So that's good. Also, given the developments uh, development, in my opinion, refi is highly undervalued in comparison to MCC, and that should be at least one-third of market cap of MCC for fair valuation. So what to buy? Both is what Dr. Oral Crypto says. Honestly, both are great plays, but if I had to choose only one at this moment, refi and MCC, I would go with refi. Remember, I am a risky degen, so my strategy generally would lean towards more risk and more exes. Yeah, I mean, the fact that reimagined finance gives back Ethereum, I mean, that to me, you know, like, I don't really want to do anything on Ethereum chain, honestly. I just, you know, um, it's just too expensive for little old me right now. Um, I'm going to follow Dr. Oral Crypto. Good, good thread, Dr. Oral Crypto. So anyway, so I, you know, of course, being the DGen that I am, you know, I, I ran over to straight over to Phantom Chain <laughs> to take a look at some of that. There's cross chain capital on the Avalanche chain, but I had some uh, a good chunk of Phantom tokens on Phantom Chain. So I went straight over to Scary Chain Capital. <laughs> I was like, hmm, why not? You know, and uh, yeah, so we'll see how this goes. So I dumped some of my Phantom Chains into Scary Chain Capital. Um, whenever you buy these tokens, you have to go to like Spooky Swap or Spirit Swap, and you have to set the slippage to like 15%. And that 15% is so that they can allow for the, the in and outgoing tax um, as you buy the tokens that go to the, the owners of the token, the holders of the token, and to the treasury so they can invest in all these other protocols. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, here's Scary Chain Capital uh, buy on Spooky Swap, buy on Spirit Swap, a dashboard documentation. Um, the wolves that invest trade and build for you. Um, so, yeah, here, yeah, the new buyer, Scary Chain Capital Treasury. So 2% goes to the new buyers, 8% goes to the treasury um, every time you, you buy or sell right um and uh um so here's the team you know these are enons right here so uh, i guess you can go to their twitter um scc is kyc yeah auto did yeah I, okay i don't I, i've been to plenty of these rug doctor audited you know protocols but so but i mean i sat here and i put money into it uh <laughs> 
Um, so let's go back to multi-chain capital real quick. I want to show you uh, their Medium blog. And um, oh, first of all, I'll show you this interface. I, I, put, I put in a couple hundred dollars on a, a, a worth of phantom tokens on scary chain capital. And uh, yeah, it's pretty scary. <laughs> so, but but uh, here you get like, you know, uh, let's see how much this is. Uh, 431, 87, I got... Yeah, well, it, my balance has increased because the value of the token has increased. So yesterday I had like two hundred and eighty nine dollars uh, worth or two hundred and sixty eight dollars. I'm sorry, worth of SCC tokens in there. Now I have three hundred and seventy three dollars worth of SCC tokens in there. And then the total reflection is I've gotten more tokens back. Ninety two cents worth, but two hundred and sixteen thousand three hundred and eighty of those. So, yeah, um, interesting. So. Yeah, we'll we'll see where this goes. I'm gonna let it sit in here for like a week and then come back and and then uh, try to determine what's going on. Um, you know, this is you know th this is total like degen stuff here. Like I do not recommend anybody to do this stuff. But this is kind of what this this show is all about. Me just like testing this stuff and seeing what's happening, and so I can make these mistakes so you don't have to. <laughs> so uh, I'll report back to you, and if I hit on something good, I'll let you know. Um, so anyway, here's the multi-chain capital long-term plans. Okay, farming strategy. Okay, here's their farming strategy. Uh, this was as of December 23rd. Um, so let's see here, five-minute read. Okay, uh, over 11,000 holders, 575,000 of buybacks with an average of 60,000 just this week. Um, 375,000 of LP added to pancake swap. Um, yeah, hyper deflationary tokenomics are working. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> This is this is the stuff that the Bitcoin or Maxis w w warn you about. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, but I I saw all over Twitter, you know, people putting DeFi 3.0 and stuff like that, and I I wanted to check out what this hype was, and I wanted to investigate it a little bit at least, so I can either warn you or give you a heads up to something cool. Uh, in advance so ah man it's not pulling up every time i stream the internet tries to take its time and i gotta go here in a second too so i need to take my kid to school and um yeah make sure that my wife is not burdened with anything at all today so anyway here's the maximum supply uh one trillion mcc tokens yeah five percent of each buy sell goes to existing holders via reflections um so anytime yeah okay uh, reflections is a reflection of um, what they what's being earned um, fr from the yield farming. So uh, that's that's my bad. Um, it's and then five percent of each buy sell goes into multi chain farming to add to the treasury and buy back MCC tokens. So yeah, so yeah, whenever you buy or sell, five percent, you know, so ten percent. There's a ten percent tax, and five percent goes to existing holders, and five percent goes into the multi chain farming. And they are farming on Polygon, Phantom, and Avalanche with various different type of protocols. Um, and, uh, you know, so, yeah. Um, so that's basically it in a nutshell. Uh, I got to go. I'm at 28 minutes and uh, I need to do my deal. I'll be back on at 8.15 with Ivan and James Montgomery. And we're going to be talk about, talking about automated governance and just kind of shooting the shite about that. But I wanted to jump on and get a show in the books. Um, just in case anything were to happen with them and they were not be able to make it. Um, I've learned that uh, the hard way. So, it, you know, and it's it's fine. You know, everybody has things come up in life and stuff like that. So I just wanted to make sure that I had something in the books, you know. Um, so, all right. Well, uh, that being said, I will talk to you guys at 8.15. All right. Later. Thank you for making it to the end of this program. If you actually like this content, give a thumbs up. And if you want to hear more, just hit the subscribe button. I'm available on YouTube, Odyssey, and BitChute, and on all the major podcasting platforms in audio version. Spotify specifically. If you would like to follow and leave a review, that would help a lot. I am also available on Twitter at EurekaJohn1. That's E-U-R-E-K-A John, J-O-H-N, and the number one. My DMs are always open. Feel free to shoot me a message. Thanks again.